I previously made a video showcasing our terrain generation system with caves, and a lot of people were asking about how the whole thing works. Well, the simple answer is... I have no idea, since me and my friend worked on it together, and he tackled the entire terrain system. However, I contributed to the procedural cave system generation thingy, so that's what this video will be about. But, if this video reaches 100,000 likes, I will struggle and cry reading his spaghetti code, so I can make a video on how his terrain system works. But anyways, let's get started with the video. Before getting into the logic of how it works, first let me talk about an important concept the procedural cave system uses, called CSG or Constructive Solid Geometry, and it's just Boolean operations with meshes. Let's say I have a cube and a sphere as a CSG mesh. Their operations are both set to union. If I intersect them over each other, their mesh will be combined. It's sorta of hard to tell, so let me go to wireframe mode where it's more apparent. If I set the cube's operation to subtraction, then you'll notice the cube disappears, but it is outlined in orange. If I move the cube into the sphere, then wherever the cube intersects with the sphere is taken out. The third operation is intersect, and for this, they both need to have the intersect operation enabled. Both their meshes are gone, but if I put them inside each other, then the area where both of them are intersecting is where this mesh is left. The best part about CSG is that if you click this to enable collision, then the collision will work accordingly. Now here's the interesting part. If I have two CSG spheres with the operation as union, and I put them into each other and go inside of it, then we have something that resembles a cave system. By the way, to replicate this, you need a material on both of them, and in transparency you need to set cold mode to disable. Now that you understand what CSG or constructive summing something is, let me explain the actual logic behind the cave generation before diving into implementing it into Gadoo. So imagine we have a bunch of cave CSG meshes with different shapes and stuff. One mesh can be a tunnel, one can be a cavern, and so on. Now you put these meshes together, and if you go inside, just like the spheres, these caverns will be connected and we've got ourselves a procedural cave system. Now time for the implementation. First we're going to start on Blender. Get a bunch of cave piece meshes. Make sure they're closed off as well, like this. Now that I've got the cave pieces, I'm going to import it into Gudu. Default export settings is fine. In Gudu, instantiate it in any random scene, and save each mesh as a T-Res. Preferably in a meshes folder. You can delete the GLB containing the caves now, once every mesh has been saved. In your main scene, add a CSG Combiner 3D and call it Caves Container. For each cave piece mesh we have, we are going to have to create a scene with the same exact things in them. To make it easier, let's use an inherited scene. Make a scene called Cave Base and in it just add a CSG Mesh 3D, a Node 3D called Entrance Points, and a Node 3D called Extra. Once that's finished, click Scene, then New Inherited Scene. Call it Cave Piece 1. If a node is yellow, that means it's part of the scene you inherited from, which in this case is the cave base scene. You can't delete or repair the yellow nodes, but you can change their properties. Any changes made in the inherited scene will not be applied to the parent scene. Inherited scenes are useful for when you have a bunch of scenes that will have the same stuff in them, like a cave scene. Instead of making a new scene each time and having to copy paste, you can just inherit the base scene. Back to making the cave scene. For the mesh of the CSG mesh, choose one of the cave meshes you have. In the entrance points node, add node 3Ds and place them for every point of the cave where you want an entrance, or wherever you want the cave pieces to connect to it. By the way, you need to have at least two entrance points or there will be an error later on in the code. In the extras node, just put lava or water or any other decorative thing you want. For each of your cave meshes, create an inherited scene with all the proper information. Once that's all done, let's get started with coding. First, let's create an array with a preload of each cave scene. Next, create a random number generator. Next, create a variable called cave entrance points, and just set it to be empty. You can delete func process. In func ready, do random.randomize, which will give the random number generator a random seed. To get the seed, you can just do random.seed, and it will give you the random seed that's been given to it. Now write var starting piece equals this thing, and it will basically just pick a random cave seed and instantiate it. Create a new function called append entrance points. Now write this in here. What this does is it gets a zero of child of the cave scene, which should be entrance points. And if in the cave scenes the first child is not the cave entrance points, you need to change it. After it gets the entrance points container, 
It loops through all of its entrance points, appends their global positions to the cave entrance points list, then deletes them. Back in Funk Ready, add child to starting cave scene, then call the append entrance points function and pass it to starting cave scene. Create a function called spawn cave piece. Now we're going to do the main for loop and do spawn cave piece in it. Do for I in range however many cave pieces you want to spawn, which I'll put 10 for now. And if you decide to be funny and put a number like a million, I advise you to not to do that unless you want a computer to die. We're going to have to create two more functions that return a position. Function 1 will be called get random entrance point position, and this function will be used to get a random entrance point for a new cave piece. The second function will be called get random connection point, and this function will be used to get a random point that the cave can be connected to. In the get random entrance point function, put these lines of code which will get a random entrance point node 3D in a given cave piece. Next, save its global position in a variable, queue free the entrance point node 3D and return its position. In the get random connection point function, put this line which will get a random index number from the array of available connection points. By the way, I know there's a method on arrays called pick random, but if you do this, then the cave generation will not be determined by a random seed. Next, get the position from the list, remove the index from the list, and return the position. Time for the final step. In the spawn cave piece function, instantiate a random cave piece and add child it. Next, randomize its rotation, just for variation. And yes, I want a big shiny metal for using radians instead of degrees. Create a new variable called entrance point position and use the get random entrance point position function with the cave as the argument. Next, wait a tiny bit for the thingy to queue free properly. Create a variable called point to connect and call the get random connection point function. Create another variable called required transform and set it to this. Finally, set the cave's position to the required transform and append all entrance points of the cave. And just like that, the procedural cave generation works. Let me just explain what all this does. So it gets a random available cave entrance point, then it gets a random entrance point on a new cave piece, then it finds the distance between the two pieces, and it sets its position based on their distance. By the way, before finishing this video, it is very important for me to mention that CSG is not perfect, and sometimes you may notice breaks. CSG is also very rough on performance, even after the generation is complete. What you can do is, in the CSG container, you can call get meshes on it, and it will return a single mesh of the entire thing, which you can then set on a normal mesh instance 3D. Anyway, subscribe for more videos, or else I'll bring back the Mr. Beast AI voice.